What's up everyone, Adam here from Cape Crawlers and this is the SCX24 versus the FCX24 showdown. Rocky versus Creed, Nyx versus the Bulls, Godzilla versus Kong, and now Axial versus FMS. While these two little guys may not be at the same scale as some of those other epic rivalries, these two tiny titans are ready to do battle to see who is the king of the 124 scale crawlers. In this video, we're going to compare the Axial SCX24 against the FMS FCX24 in a head to head comparison in a number of ways. We're going to look at value. We're going to look at standard features, fit and finish, performance, consumer appeal. We're going to come at this from a bunch of different angles. So it's going to be fun. Let's check it out. So let's meet the contenders here who are about to do battle for supremacy. Let's take a look at the Axial first, the reigning champion. Representing the SCX24 family in this comparison is the Deadbolt. I chose the Deadbolt because I did a poll on social media on Facebook and on Instagram to determine which was the most capable SCX24 out of the box. And while it was close between the C10 and the Deadbolt, the Deadbolt took the win. So we picked up a brand new Deadbolt a while back, specifically for comparison purposes. And this is going to be the head-to-head -head shootout that we've been waiting for. So the Deadbolt is going to represent Axial here. It is still in good condition. Yeah, we've been running it a little bit. We haven't used it a whole lot. I've really been saving it just for this video. So this is where we're really going to put it through its paces. We're going to take a good look at it. Uh, it is bone stock, has very little usage on it. It's pretty much ready to go. Let's meet our challenger. This is the FMS FCX24 Power Wagon. This is my son's rig. He is lovingly used it quite frequently it is still in perfect mechanical shape it's just a little cosmetically worn in i should say we lost a headlight this morning but otherwise ready to go he loves this thing so as you can tell he definitely uses it but this is our challenger this is the power wagon going up against the axial scx24 so let's get it going now that we've met our challengers let's dive into this so we're going to come at this from five different angles here we're going to look at the key features we're going to look at how they are right out of the box, what do they come with, what are they capable of, some of the highlights right out of the box. Next we're going to look at appearance and consumer appeal. We're going to look at that from a couple different angles, a couple different perspectives. Then we're going to look at fit and finish, quality, and also value for your money, bang for the buck. What do you get for you know about the, about the $150 range is what we're looking at here. Next we're going to do performance, and we're going to come at performance from four different angles. We're going to look at vertical climbing ability, we're going to look at side hilling, we're going to look at speed, and then we're going to look at general crawling ability. And then we're going to wrap this up with a summary and final thoughts and see if we can come to some conclusion. It's important to note that I'm not coming at this to determine a clear winner because I just don't think there is. The SCX24 line is very robust and very deep. It's also very different. The FCX24 is a completely different animal in a lot of different ways so they're they're all fun in their own way and the goal of this is just to give you the facts to show these things head to head in a variety of different ways and maybe help you make a decision if you're looking to purchase your first crawler or your next crawler maybe you're just interested to see how the fcx stacks up against the scx24 if this is all you're familiar with like myself before i got mine so I'm hoping to just provide some objective information to help you make some decisions, also provide some entertainment value, and hopefully just make this a, a fun and informative video. So let's kick it off with part one, which is the key features out of the box. All right, let's jump into our key features out of the box with these things. Now I'm gonna hit the highlights just in the interest of time. I'm not gonna do a deep, deep dive into these things. I'm gonna kinda of do the elevator pitch, what these things come with, kind of the real highlights. I'm sure I'll gloss over things and leave things out, but I'm going to try to hit the real key features that interest most consumers right off the bat. So let's take a look. 
All right, let's kick this off with our key features, starting with the SCX24. Now I'm gonna talk about the SCX24 in general, not just the deadbolt specifically here, but we're gonna talk about the, the SCX24 line kind of in aggregate. So right out of the box with the SCX24, you get a 100% ready to run crawler. It comes with the battery, comes with the whole setup, and even comes with the four AA batteries that you need to put in the transmitter. So you are absolutely ready to rock and roll right from the box with this thing. You also get a steel C-channel frame. You get coilover suspension at all four corners. You get conventional axles with steel axle shafts front and back with a dog bone set up in the front. You get steel worm gears and worm screws in both front and rear differentials. You get functional headlights. Now on the deadbolt, there are there is no way to turn the headlights off. When the crawler is on, the headlights are on. But on some of the other models, you are able to toggle that on and off with the transmitter. You get a plastic body on this model. There is a hard body available on the Ford Bronco of the SCX24, although you do pay a little bit more price point for that model. The FCX24 key features out of the box. You get a hard body. As you can see here, you get some accessories that you can put on here, some scale accessories. This cage on the back and the spare tire, this is a optional accessory. So in the, in the kit, it does come with this kind of scale accessory package. There's a number of stickers, variety of stickers that you could put on here, different colors, different logos. You get different license plates to put on the front. So there are some pretty neat customization options from this right out of the box. You get portal axles front and rear on this thing, which is going to give you significant ground clearance. Some models came with plastic gears in the portals. Newer models are coming with metal gears. So I would suggest that if you get one of these, one of the first things you should do is pop your portal cover off and just see which ones you get. If you do not have the metal ones, I suggest that you order those and seek a replacement for those. Um, you do get plastic gears also in the differentials with this one. Some other key features, you get a 130 sized brushed motor and a two speed transmission. So the powertrain on this is very, very diverse, very powerful. So there's a much bigger motor in here. The two speed transmission is operated with the transmitter. So you're able to toggle back and forth between a high gear, you can switch it into neutral and then kick it down into low gear for crawling. On the transmitter also has some features like a drag brake. You're able to adjust your drag brake, which controls your speed when you let off the throttle. On this one, you do get working headlights as well. You're able to turn these off. There's two different modes. There's a high beam, low beam, and you can turn them off with the transmitter. You also get a metal geared servo in this from the factory. And like the axial, you get coilover suspension at all four corners. This is also ready to run, although it does not contain the batteries to put in the transmitter. I don't wanna dive into the specifications too much, but I do wanna hit some highlights here. You know, just from a visual comparison, you can see the size difference here, and it is, it is very apparent the power wagon almost looks like a 118 scale compared to the 124 scale that we have with the SCX24. And we can confirm this in the specs. So if you look at the specifications, from an overall length standpoint, the deadbolt is 198 millimeters long. The FCX is 210 millimeters long. From a wheelbase perspective, the deadbolt is 133 millimeters. The FCX is 138 millimeters. From a width standpoint, so your track, the deadbolt is 100 millimeters and the FCX is 124 millimeters. And from a weight perspective, there's a substantial weight difference with the deadbolt coming in at 226, 226 grams, I believe, with the battery and everything, and the FCX coming in at 424 grams, so about 200 grams heavier on the FCX. So overall, it's a much bigger package. It's wider, longer, heavier, and taller as well. I don't have the height specs in, in front of me, but you can see very plainly that it's much taller as well. 
So those were just some highlights of the specifications because if it looks bigger, it definitely is, both from a visual perspective and on paper. So let's take a look at the next section. We'll look at appearance and consumer appeal. Starting with the SCX24 again, in the consumer appeal and the appearance standpoint, Axial has done a fantastic job making these little guys appeal to a broad variety of customers. The power of co-branding is not to be ignored with the SCX24. It has co-branding and licensing all over it, from the, from the wheels and tires to not on the deadbolt specifically, but with the Jeep and the Chevy C10 and the Bronco. Axial has just done a great job with their licensing deals and their co-branding. So it attracts a large customer base because folks who are Jeep fanatics like myself are going to gravitate towards something that they're familiar with, that they already love, and that they want to add to their collection as a novelty or just to have as a cool toy, which is what roped me into the hobby. It was when I saw the Blue Gladiator, which looked exactly like my regular daily driver. I had to have it just as a novelty, and then that sucked me into the hobby. So the, the power of co-branding is huge for consumer appeal. Aside from that, you just get really sharp, beautiful looking rigs here. Axel just does a great job with their fit and finish. You know, the KMC wheels and the Nitto tires right out of the box, it's so cool. Like when you watch these things crawl around in stock trim, especially the Jeeps and the Bronco, it, they look so cool, like just scale realism right out of the box. And that's really appealing. To a lot of folks and uh, a really kind of big feather in the cap for axial i would say for the power wagon it definitely has a great appearance to it it has a, a really cool style the hard body looks excellent especially in the red the red paint has like this metallic flake to it looks really good in the sun and the whole package just has a really kind of cool menacing look to it it's just really neat. Like I, I said in one of my other videos, it really reminds me of the movie Jeepers Creepers, the first one with Justin Long in it, where the villain drove that power wagon type van and it was just so creepy and outrageous in the movie. And when I saw the power wagon, that's what I thought of. So it's got character right from the box, which I think is really cool. The, you know, the big red wheels, and kind of the aggro tires on it, it all kind of complements the overall look. But you are limited to just the power wagon. And currently the FCX24 only comes in the power wagon body style. And I think that is going to limit consumer appeal because whether you like it or not, you may or may not be drawn to the power wagon body. The other features of it may be enough to overcome the desire for maybe a different different appearance or uh, you know a different body style but I think it's lacking a little bit in consumer appeal just because of the narrow availability of bodies and choices you do get three different colors you get blue yellow and red all of them look great but you are limited to this one specific body style which is the power wagon but if you had some diversity with body styles i think that would open up the consumer appeal but it does look great with the hard body and the overall appearance of it it just works really well together and it's just a cool looking rig now let's talk about fit and finish and quality and kind of bang for the buck what you get for the price that you pay both of these are right around you know 125 to 150 dollars depending on what you get for a model of the scx24 so what do you get for that amount of money is it good value What's the quality like out of the box? So let's start with the SCX24. So with the SCX24, you do get a pretty bulletproof design. That is one of the things that Axial has done really well with, I feel, is that this is a pretty tried and true platform and it's reliable, it's solid, it's pretty tough right out of the box. And the plastic bodies, they scratch up a little bit, but there's no paint to really rub off on here. They can take a beating and hold up pretty well. One of the things that is a gripe with these right from the factory is the weak servo. I do find that these servos tend to fade really fast. If you start doing any type of upgrade, upgrades to these, then your servo is almost likely going to be toast within just a couple hours. 
The motor is also a little underpowered. I feel, again, if you start putting weight, start putting the upgrades to it, that motor is not going to last too terribly long. But the chassis and the drivetrain overall is pretty bulletproof. The steel gears in the diff front and back are really bulletproof and work extremely well. The steel axles are strong. The plastic housings, you know, everything works together really well with the SCX24. And I think it's just because it's consumer tested, it's manufacturer tested, it's been out for a while and people have really put these things through their paces. Plus Axial was able to borrow technology from their other lines like the the tenth scale line so they've got a lot of r&d to pull from when it comes to the crawlers so I, overall i think you do get a lot for your money with the scx 24 you get good fit and finish the co-branding is super cool and it's just a a reliable fun little crawler right out of the box couple gripes like i said with the steering and the motor but for the most part, pretty bulletproof rig right out of the box. And I do think that you get good value. The Deadbolt is the least expensive of the line, I believe, at around 125 MSRP. So that's a that's a decent deal for a crawler that's as capable as this. Looking at the FCX24 here, this thing is loaded with value right out of the box. So for $150, which is the MSRP on this thing, it's right at the higher range of the SCX24 line. Still less expensive than the Ford Bronco of the SCX24, but higher than most of the other models. But you do get a tremendous amount of features with this thing. So out of the box to get portal axles, you get that awesome powertrain with a two-speed transmission. You get the drag brake on the transmitter, the hard body, the scale accessories. This thing is loaded with benefits and cool features right out of the box. Very capable, very technologically advanced. For such a little crawler at a very competitive price point but i do feel like to meet that price point and be competitive with the scx24 they did have to skimp in a couple of areas the plastic gears and the differentials kind of concerns me from a longevity standpoint we talked about the plastic gears and the portal axles which they are remedying kind of as they go i think you know all the newer models will come with the metal gears thankfully the nylon frame you know they've just they've used cheaper materials than the scx24 which uses more steel throughout the chassis and the drivetrain so they did have to you know cut costs here and there is that going to be a problem i think time will tell this thing is still pretty new it's hard to say what the longevity is going to look like on those plastic parts but we'll see but i will say i mean right out of the box for a very competitive price point you get a lot of features with the FCX24. Very impressive. Now that the housekeeping items are done, taken care of, we looked at the specs a little bit. We looked at consumer appeal, features, all that good stuff, which is important, but we really want to run these things, right? So let's get them out on the tracks. We're going to do the indoor track and the outdoor track, and we're going to run these things through some performance tests. Now, like I said earlier, we're going to do four different areas in our performance. We're going to look at uphilling, we're going to look at side hilling, we're going to look at speed, and then we're going to look at general crawling ability. So let's get after it, and we'll look at the uphill action first. For our uphill test, we're going to be using the shoot line on Mini Moab here. So this starts at approximately 37 degrees, goes up to 50 degrees incline at the steepest part. So we'll kick it off with our deadbolt here. No problem. Let's look at the FCX. Also no problem. Let's also try the escalator. So this is a very steep kind of oscillating obstacle here. So let's do the deadbolt here. This is a good test of vertical climbing ability and kind of technicality.
Deadbolt makes it. Now let's try the FCX. One more attempt. I want to try something. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Modified a little bit on the trail there, but we've got it up. Okay, for the side hilling test, again, we're going to use the chute here, which is about a 37 to 39 degree incline right here. So we're going to crawl across the face of this over to the side. Deadbolt, not able to make it across. Next we're going to do speed. So this is a second gear run for the FCX in the high setting for the Deadbolt. And as you can see, it's really not a fair comparison when we do speed. The FCX is just an animal when you put it in second gear. It is so fast for a little crawler and it's hilarious to see how fast it can go. Just easily walks away from the little deadbolt here. And it would be the same for any SCX24. The speed category is hands down in the favor for the FCX in second gear. Inside, we decided to try low gear on the FCX24 versus high setting on the deadbolt and see the deadbolt wins. On the way back, we did low setting on the deadbolt, low gear on the FCX, and interestingly, the deadbolt was still faster. 
All right, so here's our course here. So I figure we'll start and go up and around this elevated rocky area, come back down here. We'll see if they can get up on that square rock there to pivot and make a right-hand turn, come across kind of the razor's edge here, and then roll off here for the finish line. And then for challenge lines, we'll see what their capabilities are. There's a couple good lines here. On the back side, there are some good lines. So we'll try a bunch of different scenarios here.
So let's bring this home. What are our final thoughts here? Both of these are amazing rigs, super fun, just a blast to drive around. I had a so much fun with the Dead Bowl and with the FCX24. They're both great. You can't go wrong with either one of them. It's going to be really tough to pick one and recommend one because I can't give a recommendation because I don't know what you're looking for. Uh, it's going to depend on the customer. It's going to depend on the person, what you want to do, what appeals to you from an aesthetic and just personal preference standpoint. All I can tell you is that I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. I will say that some of the strengths of the Axial is that you get tried and true reliability, you get a great platform that's consumer tested, and it has an extremely deep aftermarket network out there. You can upgrade this thing to your heart's content. You can replace every single thing on this with a, a myriad of aftermarket parts. That is really cool. If you like to tinker like I do, you can tinker to your heart's content on the SEX24. It has such an immense aftermarket available to it. So that's really neat. The FCX24, the market just hasn't caught up to it yet. Their manufacturers and companies are getting there, and I do think we'll have a very strong list of upgrades available for this, probably around Christmas time at the end of the calendar year, but it's just not there yet. So much more aftermarket support where you can directly address any of the shortcomings that the FCX24 has with pretty minimal modifications. The FCX24, right out of the box, is incredibly capable. I mean, it just the, the two-speed transmission and the powertrain alone is a riot. It is so much fun, so versatile, and I think that's going to open this up to a broader variety of customers. It may appeal to more people because, hey, let's face it, you can have more fun with it. You can go fast, you can do wheelies, you can do jumps with it, and you can switch it down into low gear, and you can get excellent crawling performance. So from a versatility standpoint, and just kind of broad overarching performance right out of the box the fcx nailed it these guys hit it out of the park with this thing it is so capable and it is so much fun you know it's really tough to pick one i the axial lineup again with the branding that they've done with the jeeps and the bronco and the c10 it's tough to ignore that as well so we've got just the deadbolt here but you know another another big pro for the SCX24 is that you can pick from a deep lineup where you're just limited to the power wagon with the FCX. So it's tough. I mean maybe you like the features of the FCX but you're not a fan of the power wagon. That kind of puts you in a tough spot. So in that case you can you can go to the SCX24 and you can put portal axles on it. You can even Frankenstein these together and put these portal axles on the SCX24. There's just so much you can do with these little things. And I'm rambling now because I'm waffling back and forth and can't make a decision on which one I would recommend. So to wrap this up, I would say that they're both excellent crawlers. Comparable price point, they're, they're so much fun. Both of them are a blast. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I hope this was informative. And if you're on the fence about picking one, maybe you saw something in this video that will help you make a decision for your first crawler or your next crawler. Either way, I don't think you can go wrong with picking one of them. And if you're on the fence about getting an FCX24, maybe you've got a fleet of FCX24s and you're just looking at this new kid on the block to see if you want to spend the money to get one, I would recommend it. Yeah, I would absolutely recommend purchasing it. It's hard to pick one over the other, but if you're just looking for my recommendation on whether or not I would buy the FCX24, definitely would. I have two of them. So, of course, I would say that. So there you have it. I'm not going to make a clear recommendation on one or the other. I'm not going to say that one wins clearly over the other. I'll let you all make your own decision there. And you know, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think? Was there a clear winner in your eyes? Can we determine a clear winner? It's tough because it's a subjective question. But let's get the conversation going. I want to hear your thoughts on the FCX24 versus the SCX24 down below. As always, I appreciate you guys. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and stay tuned as we start doing more things to these guys. We're going to start building out the deadbolt now that we've done this stock comparison. I've already started an FCX24 build with my blue one, so we're going to have some fun with these things. So stick around, and we'll see you in the next video.